If you just got a new pothos plant from the nursery or you have an existing plant that you'd like to repot, you'll be glad to know that the process of transplanting pothos is super, super simple. Welcome to All About Gardening. I'm Logan Haley, and today we're talking about Epiprimnum aureum, aka pothos or devil's ivy. We have two different pothos plants here. This is the classic golden pothos, and this is a beautiful marble queen. And today we'll be taking you through every step of the super simple process of putting these baby plants into new larger containers. So let's get started. First things first, we wanna check out the root ball of the pothos that we're up potting. So I'm gonna just grasp this pothos gently by the base, shimmy it out of its container, and take a look at what these roots look like. So pothos actually prefers to be a little bit root bound, to have a solid establishment in the soil before you up pot it. Now, if your pothos has an unhealthy root zone, you, that's probably a good reason why you, why you are repotting it. So don't worry if everything isn't perfect. These plants are super resilient. So I'm going to look at these roots. I'm noticing, you know, they're not too tightly bound. If they were, I could just, you know, loosen them up so they would go into the new container really well. And then I'm also going to check for any signs of root rot. That is one of the most common problems that pothos have as a house plant. These are super easy to grow, but the most common mistake that people make is overwatering them or having them planted in a soil or in a container that doesn't drain well. So we'll explain that in just a minute. But basically I can tell that this plant isn't dealing with any root rot. It smells really nice, really earthy. There's no like rotting or anaerobic smell. All the roots have a nice creamy white color to them and they look super healthy. So this is gonna be a great baby plant to go into its new container. Now for the Marble Queen, we're looking at a hanging planter, which can be treated the exact same as any other container. And when I do go to plant this, I'm going to want to loosen up the edges and inspect the root ball to make sure that it's also in good shape. So you can see how the whole thing is coming out of the container in one piece. That's a great sign. We're not, we don't have a lot of winding or root binding. This is a beautiful, beautiful plant. And this is definitely ready to go into a new home. Once again, if your pothos don't look like this in their root ball, I wouldn't be concerned. You can easily just chop off, prune off any areas that appear to be unhealthy or rotting. And hopefully we can get them happier into some new soil and a new container. So before we get started, we want to make sure that we've selected good containers for our pothos to thrive in. Like I said before, the most important thing with pothos is drainage, drainage, drainage. If there's anything you take away from this video, your pothos needs drainage to stay happy. And that's because these plants are native to the tropics. In the tropics, there are sandy, weathered, you know, red, rusty looking soils. And those occur due to the seasonal monsoons that come through tropical regions. The rain comes all at once in a short period of time, and it drains through the soil profile very quickly. These are not swamp plants. They hate having their feet wet aka they hate having their roots sitting in water. So when we're picking our container, we want to make sure that we have drainage holes in the bottom. This is a classic just like plastic container with a self-draining cup attached to it. I also have this larger one. Again, lots of drainage holes and then a catchment tray. Classic terracotta pots are another amazing option. Ceramic pots work great too, just as long as there are drainage holes for the water to run through. Now, when it comes to size, we ideally would like to choose a container that's about two to three times the size of the existing root ball. So as you can see with our golden pothos, it's gonna go into kind of a stepping stone container and the marble queen is gonna move into this larger hanging basket that's about, you know, maybe one and a half, two times the size of the existing one. Whichever container you choose, just make sure it's deep enough that your existing root ball can fit all the way in and has room to grow and expand out so you're not having to repot it again um, within the next few months. Ideally, pothos will continue growing and have plenty of space to get a happy root ball and keep trucking along for the rest of the season in your house until you're ready to either divide them or move them into something bigger. All right, so now we're going to talk soil. Before we get these plants into their new homes, I want to mix together a nice well-drained potty mix that's going to keep them extra happy in their new pots. So I'm going to mix it in this bowl. You can use any sort of container. If you don't feel like mixing your own potty mix, you could just buy a standard potting mix or a succulent potting mix it tends to work really well for these plants. Once again, because it has like peat moss, coca coir, vermiculite, perlite, any of those materials that keep water flowing through very quickly. 
So in this case, I'm just going to go with one part perlite, one part compost, and one part standard organic potting mix. Get this all mixed together. All right, so now we've got a nice, well-drained, loamy blend. You can see that there's lots of air spaces and pore space where water's just gonna flow right through. And we can do a quick water test to make sure that the pothos is gonna be happy in this soil. So a really good way to tell that the mix is well-drained enough is that the water is gonna just flow straight in and it's not gonna pull up on the top. There you go. It absorbed it quick, we're good to go. All right, so we've got a nice potty mix prepared and now it's time to get planting. So I'm gonna fill my new container for the baby golden pothos just about half of the way. Okay, so I'm about half the way full and then I'm going to make a little hole in the center where my new root ball is gonna be able to go in. Now, again, gently grasp this baby up. Check that everything looks good. Place it in the new hole. Simple as that. When we backfill this plant, we wanna make sure the soil surface level is right where it was before. So I may kind of hold it up and um, ensure that it's sitting right at that height because I don't wanna bury the vines um, too deep where they might rot. All right, so now it's time to backfill. I'm just gonna use a little cup to start putting soil in around our baby golden pothos. I want to keep, again, the base of those vines right about at the same surface level where they were in their original pot. Burying them too much could just result in, you know, rotting or excess moisture that we don't want. We want to keep everything nice and aerated. So I'm not going to like push this soil down or compact it. I'm just going to get it, you know, to fill out the container so that the plant is standing up straight enough um, that it can keep growing in its normal habit, but I definitely don't want to press down. Just doing a light, light pat. This part's a little messy, so that's what makes it fun. But as you can see, our new plant looks super happy in its new home, and the final step is going to be watering her in. So watering in is just that final step of the transplanting process that helps this new pothos get established in the new soil and encourages the roots to start reaching out into its new home. So this plant is all done and now it's time to get the Marble Queen in a new larger hanging basket. A great rule of thumb is to water until you see liquid coming out in the lower catchment tray. That's a good sign that it's thoroughly moved through the soil profile and the pothos has plenty of water to get it through that establishment phase. From there, you probably won't need to water it for quite a while as it just gets adjusted and um, you ensure that there's no signs of rotting or a lack of drainage in the new container. All right, now both of our pothos plants are happily in their new larger containers. Just to recap, number one, we wanna make sure that we have a container for our pothos that has drainage holes at the bottom. So that could be a self-watering container, it could be a classic terracotta or ceramic pot that has a water catchment tray, or it could be a hanging basket with drainage holes at the bottom that we're gonna take outside uh, whenever we water this plant. Number two is the importance of a well-drained potting mix. In this case, we mix together one part potting mix, one part compost, and one part perlite. We could also add to that something that improves drainage like cocoa choir, peat moss, or shredded bark. Or you can select a pre-mixed potting mix by searching for one that has um, the word succulent on it or is specifically designed for tropical plants. Step number three was partially filling the container about halfway and creating a little divot in it to put that um, root ball inside of and ensuring that the pothos plant ends up right about at the same soil surface level as it was before. We don't want to overly bury those roots, nor do we want, uh, sorry, we don't want to overly bury those vines, nor do we want the roots to be exposed at the top. And the final step was watering in our plants. That just allows the initial establishment phase to go by a little bit easier. If you'd like, you can add a diluted kelp solution to help with transplant shock and let your pothos get established in its new container more quickly.
We are so happy that you joined us today on All About Gardening. We have lots of articles on all the different types of pothos, troubleshooting pothos, and we have more videos coming your way on how to take care of this super easy to grow house plant, commonly known as devil's ivy because it's so dang hard to kill. Until next time, have a good one.